Today, we're going to be talking about what seems to be the big white elephant in the room, the changes in the mortgage industry and how it's going to affect new buyers. Well, today I have a very special guest. He's going to shoot from the hip and give us a scoop on these changes. And we're going to get started right now. Today, I have the pleasure of picking the brain of one of Lakeland's most well-known and respected mortgage professionals, Ken Watson with The Mortgage Firm. Ken's been in the mortgage industry for about 30 years now and has seen his fair share of major market shifts. Ken and I have been partnered for 15 of those years, and together we've successfully weathered quite a few storms. I'm also humbly grateful to be able to call him a true trusted friend. Thank you so much for being with us today, Ken. Thank you for inviting me, Lisa. I'm getting a lot of calls from buyers wanting perfect advice, which under the circumstances is impossible. But what you can do is give them the best probable advice. It's kind of like when you need an attorney. That attorney cannot guarantee the outcome of a trial or a judge's decision, but they can give you the best advice which strategies would be best to protect them. Do you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. Let's talk about the white elephant in the room. In the recent changes in lending guidelines that could affect new buyers getting a mortgage loan, can new buyers still get a loan in the low single digit interest rates? Oh, absolutely. Rates are maintaining low. They're still in the good side and much better what they've been in the last 30 years. Do you see the lending guidelines starting to tighten? What about the credit score requirements? Well, we do see them going up especially with the government loans. FHA, VA, and USDA have all raised their minimum credit score requirements to 640. And there is a possibility in the near future they may go up to a 660. Okay, okay. Well, that's not gonna to be too dramatic, thank goodness. What about verifying employment? I know traditionally we have to verify employment prior to closing. How is this going to affect those who may be concerned about a temporary furlough from their job? Well, wow. you know, that's a very good question and something that we need to address. There are three safety nets that we put in. One is which your processor who is processing your loan is going to reach out and verify your employment three days before closing. And then on the day of the closing, your loan officer is going to contact you and ask you personally if you're still working and you're still receiving a paycheck. And then the day of closing. The closer will then call your employer and verify the same information. You must have been maintaining your job and still receiving a paycheck. Without that, unfortunately, the loan cannot close. Right, right. You know, no one wants to be at the very end and told their loan can't close. You know, so these are the steps that you're taking to put, to put in place to tighten up the rain from this from happening, right? Absolutely. The last thing that Linda wants to do is close on someone who doesn't have the income coming in to make the mortgage payment and you're setting them up for failure. That would not be the right thing to do. Right. What right. about the amount of the reserves needed for approval and how is that going to change? And what exactly is reserves and why are they needed? Well, that's another good question, Lisa. Reserves is the amount of money in which the borrower has left over in their bank account after closing. Right. The weaker the loan, the, more, the underwriter may want to see that the buyer has one, two, maybe six months of payments left over in their bank account to make payments on that mortgage. Again, the last thing the lender wants to do is set the borrower up for failure. So are those reserves going to be changing then? No, we've always had them. What we have seen though was someone who may have a weaker score they may want to see that when they buy that house and they've closed on it, that they may have a cushion to fall back on in case their paycheck was to get cut. Okay. That's really not a big change from what we, how we've always done things, which is good news. No, not at all. Will underwriters consider longevity of employment to help to approve the loan when other factors may not be favorable? Again, that could be a yes to no answer. The underwriter is going to want to look at the longevity of the employment right now during this particular crisis. The longer we're into this situation, the bar has been able to show that he has maintained his income. The underwriter will understand that the position that he is in, maybe it's considered one of those 
uh, necessity type employments, that there's a better chance that that buyer may not be laid off in the near future. Also with someone who has a less than perfect credit, that shows the underwriter that he does have a stable source of income versus of someone who may change jobs every six months. Okay, so each individual situation is being looked at and through different eyes now because of the crisis that we're in right now. Absolutely, they look for the good. Well, let me put it this way, an underwriter is gonna to wanna to look for reasons and justifications to approve that loan for the buyer rather than going looking for reasons to deny it. Right, right, that's good news. That's good news. I think that's gonna give people a lot of hope uh, oh. during this time. Yes. Ken, with your 30 years of experience, how do you think the mortgage industry is going to react and adapt? Well, we came through a very bad situation in 2008, and that was mainly due to loan products, products that were given to buyers that they didn't have to disclose their income, they didn't have to disclose where their assets came from for closing. That just set a bar up for failure. Today, right. underwriters have gone back and reviewed those policies and now those products are no longer available. So verifying the income, verifying the ability to pay, and verifying where the source of funds are coming from, it's protected the loan industry from going into the situations that we had back in 2008. Ken, what is the best advice you can give new buyers who are wanting to get a new mortgage during this unprecedented time? Great question. Number one is maintain your credit. Pay your bills on time. If you see that you may not have the money to pay a particular bill, contact that lender before the account goes past due. They will work with you. The last thing that they want to do is put a negative mark on your credit report. Number two, don't go out and make any major purchases at this time. Cut back on ex non-essential expenses, such as cable. The more money that you can put back and save, the better it will look towards you. And third, don't be despaired by the negative news that you are hearing in the media. Always reach out to the professionals for the true advice. And the good news is, when this crisis is over, and it will be over, we will see more of a shift towards a buyer's market. And that's a good thing. Ken, that is awesome advice. Anyone wanting to contact Ken, you'll find his contact information below in this post or in, if you're watching it on YouTube, it's in the description. I'm sure he'd love to talk to you about your personal situation. Ken, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me, Lisa. Our roles as being fully licensed real estate professionals for the entire state of Florida is very similar to the example that I gave you earlier about the lawyer. A realtor nor a loan officer cannot give you perfect advice because it's impossible to know what will transpire during the entire transaction, especially in this market. However, we can and will give you the very best advice possible based on the information and situation at hand guiding you through the process to help you make the necessary adjustments and best decisions along the way. These changes are a lot like a NASCAR race. Real estate trends have been on the straightaway for a few years now, meaning sellers have seen dramatic increases in home values. Plus, more buyers could afford those homes because of historically low interest rates. But we're coming up to a sharp turn now. Some buyers will panic and slam on the brakes and some agents will allow their customers to go into the term too fast and crash. Both most likely will result in not making it to the finish line in first place, but as seasoned real estate professionals, we know how to navigate you through these turns. We know exactly when to ease off the gas, downshift, then accelerate at the precise moment to take you all the way to the finish line in first place. As real estate professionals, we know how to navigate you through these turns the real estate industry is facing right now. I wanna thank Kim for taking the time to be with us today. I'm Lisa Kelly, Lakeland Homes and Lifestyles with Premier Realty. I'm here every single Monday with a new video to help you make a smart decision when buying and selling a house. And until then, I'll see you on the next one.